Hello everyone. We're good. We have a few viewers. That's nice. Thanks for coming. Oh dear, you can see me in my furry slippers. It's too cold up here. I forgot to put the heating on and so I'm shivering in my slippers with the heating on. Right, let me switch it over to Canvas Cam. There we go. Just put out a little bit of burnt sienna. I made a terrible discovery. This is my last tube of burnt sienna. Right. right, let's go. Right, I'm going to be working on this is Fabriano Artistico, which is um, a paper I use a lot. Uh, it's good quality paper, it's 100% cotton, takes colour well, um, and it's often. Um, a little cheaper than a lot of the others. It's not quite as absorbent as Arches. I think Arches is a good paper to start with because the paint doesn't dry quite as quickly. Um, but but this this is going to be fine. So I'm going to be redoing this Toucan painting, which we did in class yesterday. And at the time, um. I thought it was okay. I wasn't so sure about the colours, but it's actually grown on me overnight, as sometimes happens. But I think there's a little, there's a few things I'd like to change. It's just the, the shape of his beak. Um, and I want, I think I want to warm up that yellow a little more. I think it's a bit too, a bit too green. Oh, I'm getting some ch comments. Thanks. Okay, good. Oh no, now my camera's disappeared. Oh, this isn't good. Let me restart. Oh, it seems to have crashed. Apologies about that, there's always something. <clears throat> I have some software on my phone that streams it to the PC and sometimes for no apparent reason it just decides to stop working. But we're back now. Right. I will keep an eye on the monitor and hopefully it won't happen again. It doesn't usually happen, but of course when you're live, all sorts of things happen. Right, Toucan. So yeah, so I think back. I want to change the colours a little bit, but it, as I said before, it has grown on me. Um, but I think the shape of the beak could change, and maybe a little more interest around. I do like this kind of misty, diaphanous appearance here. Um, but. Let's let's get going and see where it takes us. Okay, I'm going to put that to one side. And please, if you want to ask anything, go ahead. I'll try and I'll try and maintain some kind of coherent speech throughout this, although it is difficult. If anyone's tried talking and painting at the same time, I know some of you have. It kind of uses different parts of your brain. And when things get really tricky and I have to concentrate a lot, I, I lose powers of speech. Right, so let's let's do some drawing. Now we're going to do this really loosely and it's, we're going to build it up just with layers of colour and leave out the edges you know, right till late on in the painting and the bird will sort of kind of appear out of the mist as we go through. So I'm going to just lightly draw in some beak. So there's this line on his head. I'm 
His beak is actually wide, isn't it? And I don't think I made his beak wide enough before. So he kind of hooks down. There's that little chin strap bit that comes up. That's quite an important bit I have found. His head comes out, his neck comes around. And that is almost vertical though. It's beautiful yellow pieces. I'm going to have a lot of lost edges in this piece, so I'm not going to mark in lines very darkly. Now his eye is not round. His chin strap, a little bit of eye. It's kind of flat on the top. To mark him in, and I like to just draw in a little square where his highlight on his eye is there. I just, oh, I got my mega zoom. Let me try my mega zoom. Will that show up? Of course, it's in the wrong place. Just a little square, just to remind me that I shouldn't paint into that. And as for his body, this line here it kind of comes down. I'm really not putting in many lines here. And then his foot. Now I hate painting bird feet. So I'm going to draw it in in one big shape. And then there's this one down here. Now this shoulder. I think this angle here is going to be quite important. Just put a couple of lines in there. We're not going to do any of the foliage. His other leg. His other foot. Now these are going to be very, very indistinctly painted. A little bit of this branch coming through. It's got a bit of the red bottom back there. Okay. How is that beak going to be okay? I think that beak is, it kind of looks. I'm going to make him a little chunkier in the beak section. I felt his beak was a little just a little too skinny. I don't want to put a line up there because that's going to be really, really loose. I hope I don't lose it and this is all going to be loose. A little bit of branch. I know this branch goes up through his beak, but I don't think I'm going to do that. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's all the drawing I'm going to do. Now, let's slap some paint down. Now, I wanted to show you actually, we did some kind of study sketches in class. Now these were done without any drawing whatsoever, just pushing some paint around. And I found them quite, they were quite interesting to do. I did this one first and then that one, that one second. So I like all this sploshiness here, but when I put the beak in, I found that 
I thought I would have to define the tip of his beak, but I think it actually looks better with a softer beak. And this little trim chin strap line was quite important as well. And then the original one, and I kind of like this effect. I just defined the very tip of his beak and then softened it through the end, and I really quite like that. He's got that nice misty appearance and all this water sloshing about. So that's what we're going to aim for. And I'm going to keep the yellows. They're kind of... And so there's a lot of green in there. I think I'm going to keep it more on the sort of yellow-orange side. So let's start now. I'm going to put colour down. But it's going to be very, very sploshy a lot of water every edge is going to be lost i'm not going to put in any hard edges <clears throat> until probably i don't well certainly the second layer but we're going to keep away from the edges as much as possible so let me choose a fairly a fairly chunky brush i think this is a 12 a 12 round It's an Escoda Sable, which is uh, which are my favourite brushes. I've obviously dried it a little bit bent there, but it's a nice it's a nice brush. Lots of bristles, holds lots of water. Now I'm going to start with a light yellow in here, and I'm just going to put in just single pigments, lemon yellow, right now. Let's get some out onto the palette. Now this bit is really quite a lot. Um, and I'm just going to stick some colour down. I'm going to keep away from the eye as fast as much as I can. Stick some colour down. I'm going through those edges, those lines I've put there. I'm going through them. I clean my brush. I'm just going to pull that colour way out into the background. I don't care that I can go into this dark bit because that's going to be dark. Cleaning my brush, you know, almost every couple of strokes, otherwise you get too much, too much pigment being pulled out into areas that I don't want them to be. And you can see there's a lot of drips and dribbles. Just a little bit of cut around the eye. A bit of yellow here and the thing I'm doing is I'm making sure every edge I can see is softened we can always go in and sharpen up an edge but it's really difficult to go into a sharp edge and soften it up and if I'm getting water in here I don't care if I get some blossoms, I don't care. And I'm going to add in a bit more colour. I'm I, especially careful around the edges. It's not what the, the painting is not about these edges, and it's when you're doing this kind of work, it's easy to leave those edges and then when you finish the painting you the eye is just drawn to all these edges out here all right let's put in i'm going to put in a little cadmium orange into here this might be too orange just just in small places but i'm really pulling it out into the background do i like that orange i'm not sure i like it it's down there now and then water we're going to use some splattering in a bit and I'm keeping that keeping that paper really quite wet and one thing about this technique I like is it's almost impossible to go wrong at this point you can spend quite a long time sploshing about all right okay I'm going to put a little bit of pink in his end of his beak. This is permanent rose. Actually, I'm going to mix it with slightly with some vermilion. 
I know that's very pink in there. And there's some red down here. I don't want to put a bit more red somewhere. And the water's not uh, the water. The paper's nice and wet now. So uh, even when you put paint down, it tends to start bleeding. So let me just push that out. I see. Oh, Maya's gone over. Um, Maya's asked about the palette. Yep, yeah, sure. I will go into that. Just let me tidy up some of these edges. It might look a little like a dog's breakfast at the moment, but it will dry back very light and you won't really notice any of this. Right, I'll just go over my palette. Now, um, I've got a greenish yellow, lemon yellow, that's my main yellow. Um, I don't really use uh, a warm yellow like a cad yellow. Um, I've got cadmium orange, although I don't really need it, but I like the texture of it. It's kind of a, a creamy, opaque paint, and I just like the feel of it. But from a colour point of view, um, I could mix my, my yellow and my, my red quite happily. Um, I have two reds, um, an orangey red, which at this point is vermilion, um, but a, a cad red or a naphthol red or a, um, what's the other one, pyrrole red would do and a pinkish red which this one is permanent rose and i think all of these are da vinci paints that's probably holbein um quinacridone red would probably do a lizarin crimson at a pinch but that's kind of got a kind of blackish quality to it um yellow ochre and you can tell i don't use this much because it's kind of stiffening up a bit um, i do use it a little bit we might use it in this actually um, burnt sienna, I use a, an awful lot of that. Uh, this was a test paint, this is some raw umber, which um, Paul Foxton uses uh, basically exclusively. To, um, I don't find it works very well for watercolours, but I tried it out. Um, I use cerulean blue, um, it's a nice kind of blue on the greenish side, and it granulates really nicely, um, and I like that that property of it. Ultramarine, cobalt blue. I used to have phthalo, so ultramarine is the kind of purpley blue and then um, cobalt is a slightly more greenish blue. Uh, phthalo is just too powerful for me. And um, I also use black uh, quite a bit to reduce chroma of colours. Um, I don't use it for making darks, I always mix darks from ultramarine and burnt sienna. Um, and this is cobalt turquoise, which I use uh, to make really zappo greens. It makes lovely, really bright greens, which sometimes I like to use. And the other ones are kind of guest things. This is a, uh, a very bright orange, which I discovered I didn't need. It's quite close to... Uh, my vermilion. This is Holbein's lavender, which is kind of nice. And some of the, the the big guys use this. It's quite an opaque paint. I think it's probably got quite a bit of white in it, but it's nice. I I don't use it for this. Other people use it for this. They they use it to take the chroma out of colours. It will reduce the brightness of your colours quite happily. But I don't use it for that. I use I tend to use black. And that's it. So yeah, a yellow, two reds three blues although you can get away with two um burnt sienna and black are, are basically my core colors and i almost never need any other color um unless it's something really bright sometimes if something's a really bright purple i'll need to get a purple out and i don't have a green on the palette i suppose cobalt turquoise is closest to a green um i find viridian just too blue and a bit like phthalo it's just a bit too powerful um, so I tend to mix greens from uh, mostly from lemon yellow and black with a little bit of cobalt tucked in if I need it to go bluer 
and um, that keeps, keeps them quite natural because natural greens are kind of very yellowy greens. If I put black into this lemon yellow, it goes a beautiful olive colour. And if I just want to shift it slightly more blue, we might, probably might use this on his beak. Just a little bit of blue it will make me some nice natural looking greens. Okay. And I've kind of ended up with these few colours after pretty much buying every possible colour tube paint on the planet. So I have a cupboard full of um, tube paints that I never use. Oh, we're Flamingo Flamingo is asking which black it's. So I actually use lamp black. Um, it's it, a little goes a long way with with lamp black. Um, ivory black is fine. Um, I switched to lamp black because I had a tube of Daniel Smith. I think it was Daniel Smith ivory black, and it had this really strange puddingy type consistency. And so I switched over to lamp black. But you have to be careful with it because a little goes a long way. It can be, you can end up overpowering your mixes. Right. Let me just give them a spritz. I'm going to put a bit more colour. Let's really go nuts with this colour on here. So it, this is all kind of dried back. I'm going to put in a bit more yellow, I think. I mean, we can always make him more yellow and i'm just going to add a tinge a little lick the vermilion i know he's kind of green up here but i'm not sure i like that it gives him kind of this sitting in fluorescent light look about him And I'm starting to look at where the light and shade is on here and just leave this middle bit slightly lighter. But every edge I'm softening. A little bit. I'm not putting any green on that beak. I'm going to put a bit more pink up there because it's, it's dried back so much it's just disappeared. And the only thing I really worry about is keeping things soft. Go through those edges. It feels really weird when you do this and you, your brain resists you wanting to paint through these edges. Just softening out these surrounding bits, right? And now that paper's nice and wet. I'm hoping it isn't going to be too wet. I'm gonna well, let's put a little bit of dark in this body area, and I'm going to use my mix of um, ultramarine and burnt sienna for this. Maybe that brush is too small. I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush here. I just want a little more precision. I think this is a this is a 10. A little bit of fancy and a little bit of ultramarine. And again, I'm just going to pull that colour, a bit more blue in that, right through. I'm going to go through those feet. I'm just going to wait a little bit just for this edge to dry i want to put in the dark around here while the paper is slightly wet but not absolutely sopping wet it's getting quite wet down here hmm Right, and if you're getting too many 
drips and things. I'm just going to pick up some of that water. I'm going to mix up a slightly more thick mix. Now, my mix is slightly thicker, which means it's not going to spread quite as far on the paper. Maybe a little splattering. Uh, the problem that happens with this is I'm starting to lose my pencil lines. I just want a little bit up here. It's mostly yellow. And I'm, I'm going to bring out my trusty, my trusty spray bottle. I'm just leaning back a bit, seeing what's going on. Oh, there's some red down here with this bottom. Okay, I'm just going to use pure vermilion for this. Just checking my edges aren't that, see that brush is too small and I'm just letting it do its thing in here maybe a little bit of cerulean for those feet just in the general area I'm going to bring out my spray bottle. Now this is going to make the paper very wet. No, I'm going to stop that. Right now. I'm going to start thinking about putting in some edges. And I'm going to aim to put in as few edges as I can. Just wondering if I need a bit more dark in there. I think I do. And from doing the sketches, this little chin strap bit is important and obviously round the yellow of his chest feathers, will that be called chest feathers, is important. Just going to put in a bit more dark. It obviously needs to go a lot darker than it is right now. Still not. I'm aiming to get texture in here. I don't want it to look too contrived, especially with the splattering. You can go a bit too far with it sometimes, I think. Right, okay. I'm going to try putting some darks on his chin strap. I want it to blend a little bit. But I don't want it to be ridiculously uh, diffuse there. So let's try this. That's yeah, that ultramarine. It's going to be quite a stiff mix. I'm just going to put a stripe down and see what it looks like. Now I need to put my little finger on the paper, but I think the paper's so wet I can't do that. Oh no, it's fine. In fact, it's far too dry up there, which means I'm going to have to soften it. Yeah, I'll probably need to be gussied up a little bit. I'm just going to soften 
No, I'm not filling in the whole lines there. I'm leaving a gap. Yeah, that could have been quite a lot more bold for that. Right, let's try going around this edge then. And again, I'm not going to fill in the whole thing. I'm just going to try and pick areas that look as though they're important edges that need to go in. So like this little corner edge will be important. And I'm hoping it will diffuse a little bit. But not too much. And so this bit in here, definitely. And I'm going to soften that edge. Bring these round. And it's good. This bit's going to look flat because there's no modelling in there yet. A little bit around the top of his head. Yeah, it's very dry in there. I'm going to soften this. And I'm softening with a very clean and it's a dry brush actually. I'm, every time I'm cleaning my brush, I'm dabbing it a couple of times on a piece of paper towel. I think that could probably be soft in there. I'm going around destroying edges. And you don't really need to worry if you destroy too many edges. You can always go back and put them in again later. Okay, so how's that looking? Of course, I've messed up. All right, now we may have to have a little break in a bit because. I think I want this to get slightly, slightly drier before I start working on it. It's a little more dark in here. Just a little tilly bit on his, there's a bit of leg that comes down there. I want him to look like he's kind of appearing out of the mist. He'll slowly come into focus. A little bit of leg in there. That's not I'm not really worrying about form or putting in light and shadow at the moment. That can come later. It's pure edges. Now, is that looking a little too choppy up here? We need to do something with this beak. I do find that with this technique, you put something in and you suddenly realise, ah, I need to bring this piece up. You need, it's a case of going round and adjusting bits of the painting so they they're all kind of at the same level right let's have a go at this beak i always worry about doing the beaks so do we make him green i think is the yes why not let's make him green Right. 
So this green, I'm going to use a little bit of lemon yellow. I don't want to make him too, I want him to be quite subtle, which is an odd thing for a toucan to be, because they're probably one of the least subtle of birds. So I'm going to use my lemon yellow and my black and see if this is too dull for a beak. I'm going to leave the pink bit. And I'm going to pull through that edge and again pull through that edge. And soften those edges. Big brush full of water. And I'm softening these edges. My brush is always kind of perpendicular to the edge. And I kind of pull the brush side to side. And what's actually happening is that the belly of the brush is right on the paper. And it's the belly of the brush that's wetting the paper. And then the paint just gradually diffuses into the paper. You're not really doing any painting at this point. Let's put some of this pink in. And I'm going to just shift that pink. This is my permanent rose. I'm just shifting it slightly orange, more orangey. Everything's going slightly more orangey. It's a bit of colour on here. Now I think this edge needs to be an edge. Let's put that edge in. I think the rest of it can be soft. And it's really useful to do those freehand sketches ahead of time because you, you discover things about your image that you probably wouldn't discover if you go straight into the main painting. Yeah, not sure about that. Let's put some yellow up here. It's wet, so it's going to diffuse. And I'm not putting the tip of his beak in yet. Yeah, I could maybe have been a little, a little more bold there. Stick a little bit of. A million. And that paper's nice and wet, so that should diffuse. And it won't look like much at the moment. I always find this with watercolour paintings. It's you try and make it look good at every stage. Uh you you don't end up with a good you can't you can't make a watercolor painting look good at every stage because uh, all the darks go in right at the end right now i think i'm going to put a bit of dark in for that eye i think the whole thing needs a bit of focus and if i put the eye in i think that will help so this is just a very stiff mix of burnt sienna and ultramarine and my head might get in the way at this point. Just going to paint around that highlight. You can always go back and use a bit of opaque white for highlights, but I do like to get it, get them in first. I'm just leaving a few bits of white paper there. He's going to look kind of stark for now. Let's put a bit of shadow around that eye. That eye is kind of green around there, isn't it? Do we like the green? I don't know that we like the green. Let's see. So this is the colour I used on the beak. It's not going to be dark enough. see how this looks. It's a little bit of shadow around there, just leaving a bit 
So a little halo around that eye. And soften those edges. And how's that going? Yeah, it needs to be softened. That's a start. It won't be the finished thing. It's a start. Okay. Well, I'm just going to stand back for a minute and see what it looks like and see what really leaps out at me as to what to change. Oh, my coffee's gone cold too. Mm. Yeah. So that chin strap needs beefing up a little. I'm kind of liking these edges around here. The beak obviously needs a little work. There's no actual shadow on the bottom of it, which will help a lot. Let's, let's have a look at what's going down in the body, because this is still really quite light in there. So what are we looking at? It's probably around, yeah, it's, it's even, yeah, maybe a four and a half. So we've got, we've got a long, a long stretch on our value scale that we can work with. But I'm kind of liking the texture. I kind of like the way that the, the edges are kind of just poking through at the moment. I don't think it's too mannered. I don't want it to look gimmicky. Right, let's let's put a bit more. Actually, I think this I do like the curve of the back of his body. Let's let's put that in and see what that edge does. But every edge that goes in will add something. Hopefully. And then the trick is knowing when to stop. Let me put that edge in and that angle and I'm just really placing bits of paint down I'm not using the brush really as a brush I think I'm just gonna gussy up that bit a little bit okay I'm gonna clean my brush and just soften that edge and all I'm really doing here is I'm just wetting the paper so the pigment flows into the wet parts. Yeah, okay. And maybe I think this does need a bit more. I'm a bit worried. I don't want to make it look like it's drawn on I want it to bleed a little bit how about that? I think that looks better doesn't it? I think that looks better which I don't even think I need to soften much of that. The paper is just, just wet enough that it's letting it, letting it bleed through and destroy a couple of edges. I'm now wondering whether that's too, too defined. Hmm. Anyway, let's carry on down here. I'm going to have to tackle those feet at some point. Gonna put a little more shape to this bit, slightly curved. A 
And then there's the back of that leg edge there. And then the body comes here. And I'm very rarely joining things up. If I've got a straight line on something, I'll only paint bits of it. I'm going to put these bits in and then I'm going to have to stand back again, I think. I think I like that. I'm going to soften that. It's, it's drawing my eye and annoying me. See, that's annoying me now. All right, let's put in these wretched feet. The horrible feet. All right, this isn't actually cerulean blue. Actually, let me just take that back a bit with a little bit of black. Can I see where my feet are? I'm going to paint them all in one shape. The knuckles are quite important. Alright, can I see where this is? These may stick out too much. I might come in and destroy these. What's that doing? So this underside is probably soft. I'm going to put a little bit of dark. Again, this is ultramarine, but sienna. I know there's loads of leaves in here, but I decided I'm not going to do the leaves. Just a little definition. On the left side of this branch thing. I don't know if that's going to work. Lots of water. Shadows. I'm using a too small a brush and it's showing. Ugh. Okay. He's starting to get there, I think. I think he is. I do kind of like these misty shapes in here. Let's put a bit more. Softening. This paper surface is getting a bit of a, a bit of punishment actually. Right, okay. I actually kinda like that. That's good the 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 value changes are quite subtle. 
but the shapes are interesting. And I think there's enough definition on that body. It might need it. He's too short, isn't he? He's too short. I'm not standing back enough, I think. How do I keep that without? Yeah, okay, I'm going to leave that for now. I don't know what to do. So if I'm having trouble with an area, my solution, which seems to work quite well, is go and do something else and then come back to it. So I'm going to come back to it. How are we doing for time? Okay, not on an hour. All right. So I'm just going to let this dry a bit. I don't think there's anything more on here that I want to work wet into wet with. So I'm just going to give him five minutes or so to dry off a little. And I think he's very close. The next bits we put in will really start to sharpen him up. We need to finish the beak. One thing that will make a big difference is putting some um, shadow on his yellow chest feathers. And we might darken up his body a little bit. A little bit of detail on the feet. Yeah, okay. Okay, right, I'm just going to take five minutes, stretch my legs. I'm going to stand back and take stock. I don't like this curve. That's what's that's what I don't like. I know. I'm sorry. I said we're going to take a break, but I just looked at it and thought, aha. Which means I'm going to have to redo. I think he needs to come out more. I need an edge kind of there. just a little bit too okay right okay let's try that Yeah, I'm standing back and I can I said I was gonna let him dry, didn't I? I was obviously not letting him dry. This is quite a struggle. Okay, note to self, don't use your smallest brush when you're trying to... I know the colour's not... Yeah, I think the colour's okay. Right, I'm going to leave that bit. I'm just going to put that bit. I just wanted a little bit of dark coming down diagonally through here. It doesn't actually represent anything. Let's... Let's keep that there. 
Oh, thank you, Edison. Yeah, it's um, he's not a disaster. Usually, halfway through, I'm thinking, well, this is ruined. I may as well give up. But I'm not thinking that right now, which doesn't this doesn't at all mean that it won't end up as a disaster. <laughs> But yeah, I think he's I think he's looking okay. Okay, I'm gonna leave I am gonna leave him for a couple of minutes. And just let him dry off. Um I know we're we're gonna go back in and do the beat, but I tend to drag my arm over the whole thing and ruin him. I'm seeing that this leg needs to be fixed. Although I do like shapes. Right. So, so quite yeah. So we spent an hour. Quite a lot happens in an hour. It's um, but it's 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 not as even though it looks as though it's got sort of really splashy and sploshy and fast moving. It's not. It's quite a measured way of working because you're just you're just working on one edge at a time and then reacting to it and then another edge. I think it's uh, I think it's a nice method. Right, one thing I am going to do, I'm going to refresh my water while I'm here. Okay, let's have a go at this beak then. I need to put some definition in there, but not too much. Otherwise it won't read as, as though it's really there. Now, I do want to put some shadow under there, I think. Let's put some shadow on that beak. I don't want it to be a huge, heavy line. I'm going to use my lemon yellow, which brush is shedding. A little bit of black. I'm wondering whether to warm that up. Sorry, I mustn't use the word warm. Make it slightly more orange. A little bit of vermilion in there. Alright, let's put a little bit of turquoise under there as well. Kind of goes up to a line, doesn't it? Just squinting at it. I'm going to pull that across. A little bit of orange. Just along there, it will bleed, which will be nice. A little bit of cad orange up here.
just wondering whether that's going to be strong enough. And this beak, and again, I'm going to push that beak. It's, it's really quite a pinkish red fur. Just a little bit of maybe some ultramarine, just for this underside. Let this, yeah. Um, this bright tip. I want to keep that gap. How does that look? That doesn't look too bad, actually. I'm just looking at some quite subtle colour changes. A little bit of cerulean. Let's give that beak a little bit of interest. Yeah, I don't know about that. Hey, no, I don't want to do that. Oh well, it's there now. Yeah, I don't know. Images. All right, that's this thing. This is another point where I'm going to let it dry and come back to it. Let's move on to this yellow piece. I'm toying with, I want to bring out the front of it, and in the photo, it's He's got this little leaf that brings out that edge. I'm wondering whether it needs that or not, or whether we can just do it with shadow. Let's try doing it with shadow. Let's see if that works. So I'm going to take a lemon yellow. I'm actually going to use a bit of this. This is, um, oh, what is this? Transparent burnt orange, I think. Just want to take that slightly I don't want to keep it on the green side I want to keep it on the orange side that's where our shadow pieces are a little bit more yellow just a little bit of intense yellow right, and now I'm going to smooth all that And I don't judge what it looks like until all the edges are smoothed. Because when you put the paint down in little dabs, it looks very stark. 
Okay. A little bit up here. Alright. I kind of like that. Let's put some down the bottom and see if that still works. Uh, let's put it in orange. I'm going to come up just slightly there. I'm hoping that will bring out that shape. Hmm, maybe. I like the colours. It probably does need something a little darker in there, but will that ruin it? So that's lemon yellow black. I know that's got reflected light in there, but I'm going to ignore that and see if this. Oops. A bulge, which I don't like. Just going to put a little bit more colour. It's, it's the light is really there, isn't it? Soften those edges. Get a little bit around here. A little bit of that mixture. Transparent, burnt orange and yellow. So I kind of like that. It gives it a bit of golden, which I know isn't in the photo. But... Right. How's that looking? He's got he's got a nice richness to him. Something's gone terribly wrong down there, but I'm gonna have to live with that right now. Okay, let's add in a few more darks into his body. I don't I want it to have contrast, but I don't want it to be a big pasted on black shape. I do want a little bit more contrast and we it's still wet in there, so I think I like that lost edge through there. Just being very careful at the edge and then pulling it back. Into the body. Let's soften that a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm washing my brush like almost every stroke or two. You really are painting with the water with this. Uh, it doesn't look good, does it? Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm getting close. I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking I'm not sure what else I should be doing. I think that beak just need a little bit more. It's still a bit more in this body. And I like the texture in here. 
Oh yeah, I said I would have to do something with this leg. I just can't get the shape of that body right. How's that? I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Let's just try and put a bit of shadow on these feet. I don't want them to be... I don't want them to draw the eye at all. I do want to have them, let them have a little bit of form. Just a little bit. I can't really see that back there, if that's okay. All right, I'm very close to being done, actually. I don't think I need... Oh, hi, Johannes. I'm just going to have a little bit of an extra wrestle with that beak. And I think I may call it a day. Pushing that paint around quite a lot. I know there's markings along the middle of this. Yeah. I don't think I want to do that. Maybe something with this eye. Although I'm tempted to leave it. Any verdicts on the eye? It's quite an important part of the bird, so you don't want to mess him up too much. Right. I think I'm done. I think I'm done. This down here is bothering me, but I think it's going to have to, I'm going to have to live with it. Okay. Phew. So that wasn't, what was that, hour and, hour and a quarter? That's not too bad, is it? Now, am I happier with him than I am with the previous one? I think I am. 
think I am. I think he's got more of a he's got more of a personality. Okay, guys. Well, thank you for coming along. It's a bit of a spur of the moment thing, but I wanted to record this anyway, so I thought, why not just stream it directly? So I hope to see you again. I'll see you on Facebook at some point. Oh, let me put him back to me whilst I'm here. Yeah, so thanks for coming. I'll try and look at the camera. I'm still not used to this yet. <laughs> it was it's I, I encourage people to try this if you do paint in watercolour. It's 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 a really nice technique and you know, you just start off all sploshy and then just pick and choose and put the put the edges in where they where you can see them. Um and it has this wonderful sort of misty effect where the, the image appears out of nothing so uh, it's fun it's fun anyway guys uh, thanks for joining me um i will see you i will see you again yeah thanks alison thanks johannes thanks penny lovely i want to find the button to end the stream <laughs>